Welcome back to If I Knew You Better. Finally, I'm Brendan Davis, and this is my show. You know that if you clicked and saw my big fat head on that uh, on that picture. We have been on hiatus for a couple of good months now for various reasons. I was traveling, and I had these great plans. When I went to L.A., went back to the West Coast and thereabouts for some business stuff, and I had this plan. Oh, I've got all these friends I'm going to catch up with in L.A., and I'm going to interview all these interesting people who are doing cool things, and none of them had time for me. And I had no time to go ch- chase them down. That was the thing. If I could have gotten in the car and driven to, say, Calabasas, that would have worked. I didn't have time to go to Calabasas. No offense. But what I do have time to do, fortunately now, is kick it off in the new year. And I'll get into why that's possible. But we're kicking it off, my favorite way, with my buddy Kevin Geiger. We're doing a little fretful lawai. Yeah, thank you, Brandon, for inviting me back. Good yeah, to be back. Good to have you, man. And this is uh, this is our little gem. If you're new to the show or you're just discovering this, Kevin and I started this, you know, I interviewed him on my first podcast, Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. Those archives are still up, although the show is retired. But we you just started, couldn't get enough of me, right? We started, yeah, couldn't get enough. <laughs> we started, we kept, we, we started doing these, you know, just check in like about once a month or so, depending on schedule. And we joked in the first one that we sound like a couple of fretful laoi because yeah. we were kind of on our, we were going through our, our sorrows list or whatever. Our crying towel. The trials and tribulations of living and making your way in China. Completely. As a foreigner. Completely. And so we just decided, you know, this is the Fretful Laowai Radio Hour. So it's it's probably the Fretful Laowai 45 minutes or so because uh, <laughs> we, uh, we have a busy day here today. But I'm planning to put this out the day that we're recording it, which is what day? What's today? It's the 31st. So we're ringing out the old and ringing in the new on the Fretful Laowai Radio Hour. Yeah, man. So, Kevin... Yes. Uh, start with a small question. Okay. How was your 2019, personally and professionally, in whatever order? Because uh, it all intersects for us. So take that's, that that's as you small will. Question. That's that, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll build up to the big ones. Okay. Yeah, we'll build okay. up to the big ones. Got it. That's, well, actually, it's I the, can't wait to see what the big one it, is. It's actually the macro question. Okay. Yeah, that's how was my question. 2019? Wow. Um, it was. I think. Probably many people can relate to this. I'm sure you can as well. It was a mixed bag. Oh, you know I can. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a very mixed bag. Um, on a personal level, it was fantastic. So uh, as as you know, and as people who do listen to this show know, um, with my family, my wife, my two kids, um, uh, that's all been going wonderfully. The uh, My daughters, Claire, who's now four and a half, and Emma, who's almost two, and she's just now hitting. She's adorable, but she's hitting those terrible twos. But in a, in a good way, right? In an yeah. all good way. Okay. Um, it's been wonderful to see them uh, growing and really developing their personalities this past year. Yeah. Getting more involved in activities, both of them. You know, Emma on the preschool level and Claire on the school level. And making friends and just really developing their lives. And uh, the way that I work, uh, which is this kind of herky-jerky freelance independent content thing, um, has allowed me to be there for them, you know, day to day, taking them to school, being there for their events and watching and really absorbing that directly Mm -hmm. in a way that I probably couldn't if I had a job that was more (laughs) demanding of my time. So on that level, personally, that's been great. And it's been wonderful for my wife, Wen, and I to, uh, you know, see that and, and help grow that together. Professionally... Um, it's <laughs> <laughs> that could be the last question if we want. No, exactly. It's a good first question. No, it's okay. Get right um, to it. I can just give a little top line on this. Um, in 2018, it was almost the flip. Uh, personally, Emma was just born and we uh, had... Claire was just born. Oh, no, you're Emma, right. Emma was sorry. Just you know your Claire, kids. Claire, I know my kids. I'm trying to help. Yeah, that's and all right. I, I got to turn around. <laughs> I know your kids. They're that's great. Right. Um, Emma was born. And that really knocked us on our head. It was an unexpected uh, uh, pregnancy, and it's wonderful to have her. She's great. But we had just achieved a, a new balance with Claire. Yeah, right? she, was, she was kind of stable in Claire her, was stable in her and operations day-to-day. She was in day-to-day, school, yeah. and like, we were just getting... And then wham, new baby. It's like, oh, man. So um, the work-life balance that we had achieved yeah. like going into 2018 got blown apart. Right out that window. Right, in 2018. Um, however... Uh, and, and again, that wasn't a professional, uh, sorry, a personal negative, but it was just a new balance had to be uh, uh, established. But professionally, ironically, things were going very well. So the freelance projects that I was working on, the independent projects, were gaining traction. 
mm-hmm. and I was making money on things and I almost met my nuts. So like my annual expenses for the year, I got about 75% of the way there, yeah. which may sound horrible to people like, what, you were 25% short? But it was better than the previous year, which was like only 30% of my nut was made. Yeah. So I was yeah. like, hey, this is pretty good, going from 30 to 75. Right. And then next year, 2019, That's I my year. I'm gonna break even at least. Or go, and, I, and it wasn't just wishful thinking, but I had projects lined up. Yeah. I had people coming to me with offers of things that I could see, if this all yeah. works out, yeah. Um, this will be, you know, this either... Will, this will make up some of that deficit. Exactly. And, and also whole, make yeah. the... Yeah. And everything fell through. Yeah. <laughs> Long yeah. story yeah. short. Yeah. Some things because I walked away from them. We've right. spoken before about... Um, sometimes people will say any deal is better than no deal, but a no, bad deal, no, no, forget, no, no, you know, no. Um, no deal is better than a bad no deal. No one to hold them, no one to fold them. Exactly. In the immortal words of Kenny Rogers. So there were some things I walked away from either because contractually it just didn't make sense and like if... And I mean that in the way that if things, everything went well, it'd be fine. But like when you looked at it, if things didn't go well, contractually, it was going to be yep. a big problem. Yeah. And, and this is so a- There's some of those sneaky clauses, especially here, which we, let's not go down the rabbit hole, but yeah. we, we've talked about it a bit before. But sometimes there's a thing where, you know, here's the terms. And, and if it doesn't work out, we're not Penalty, paying you yeah. or you have to pay us back. I was like, right. why? I did all the thing. And, yeah. and, and Stuff it's not like in that. your favor, basically. And then uh, also, uh, like there was an acquisition offer, which sounds great. And the, the money actually was- Reasonable. It's like, yeah. okay. But there were red flags in terms of what they wanted to do with the IP, with the yeah, content that we yeah. were selling, um, whether or not that project would actually get made. Right. So it was like, you know what? We, we walked away from that. Uh, and there were some other things that walked away from us. So long story short, uh, we fell way, way short of our nut this past year. It's okay. I mean, these things happen. When you're working independently, you know, you have your ebb and your flow. Yeah. So 2019 was a big ebb for the professional, but yeah. there's a lot of flow for the personal. Yeah, and, and and luckily you you know you had worked you worked at Disney for all that time and you had success on your own. So luckily you know you had some savings. But yeah, you had, but you had to hit it. Hard yeah, we had to hit year. it harder this year than I <laughs> than I thought we'd have to. Anyway, yeah. Well, that's that's good. Well, I um you know it's been a I mean and Kevin is Kevin is involved in in some of my business. You know we're we're working. He's he's an exec producer on this movie that I've been developing now for a long time, and so we're involved in that together. And that's all trending really great. But, you know, as Kevin knows, I mean, we, we had it financed and then the people, you know, couldn't deliver for a lot of interesting geopolitical reasons yeah. having to do with uh, our, our not favorite president <laughs> in the U.S., uh, putting, putting them under sanctions because it's oil business people. And so anyway, we've had to regroup and it's, you know, looking good. Don't want to jinx ourselves. But it's been like this crazy year and, um, you know... In terms of other business stuff, I mean, I've 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 had some good in that I I figured out how to this TV pilot I've been working on forever. That's this thing I really really want to do, you know, myself, and that I'd say I have clarity with that. I, yeah, I've, I've reached total clarity of what I'm doing, and I've been working on that shipping away, and so that's that's great. And and so there's this movie, and then we have a follow-on project that's that's pretty encouraging and a really cool mm-hmm. project if we can get that one that, if we can get this done then the next one the release of it for 2022 I won't say too much but there it, it's an important milestone date in the world yeah um, about that one and so if that comes together that'll be really cool and then I have a few other people one of my New Zealand partners and I even just the other day we had a great reset catch up. And so two projects we've been I've been cool. on and off of are back on track with my buddy Andy. Awesome. Yeah, and then I I've, I've just I can say this here there's an a, a award-winning uh Persian filmmaker named Babak Payami. He he had two movies out with studios, I think Sony and Paramount, I believe released his first two. Um but I am officially I'm saying here I've officially joined his current project The Bishop's Man as an executive producer. Cool. And that's based on an award-winning novel. And so we're just starting to collaborate and about you know how I'm involved and, and how we put it together. But that's really cool. Um, so very excited about that project as well. Um, you also, not, not yeah. to interrupt, yeah, but yeah. you also just got an award recently as a oh, foreign expert oh, uh, here in China. Oh, thanks. Yeah, it's, it's actually right here underneath those, those that, that, that tissue paper. Oh, I've, yes, I've, I've I see it there. It. Yeah, that's that's right, actually. I, I was really honored to – I received – a distinguished special foreign expert award. Um, it's 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 a, it's an appointment to the to the Beijing branch of this global talent exchange mm-hmm. 
organization that uh, China maintains these in different places, yeah. and it's to recognize, you know, I, the, I used to joke about, oh, you're a fancy foreigner. Like, if you have this kind of thing, <laughs> I guess I'm technically a fancy foreigner now because I have the nice little, nice document yeah. here. And the, Well, I, I mean, I've been there, and, and uh, it, it's a good thing, and it's good to see that it's still going on, you know, in the midst of the tensions between yeah, our, you know, totally. the U.S. and China, that there are still people who are open-minded enough to see the value of this kind of exchange culturally and, exactly. and professionally, yeah. Exactly, and so that's 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 really nice. I mean, my, my business visa is up uh, 2025, but hopefully this will come in, and my appointment for this runs to 2024. It's actually... They they considered it starting in 2019, although I got the award like kind December, of retroactively, retroactively yeah. for this last year. <laughs> but um, but it's but it's basically like I get to I don't know, I don't really have the official responsibilities, but it's it's I I'm available as somebody to advise. That's right. If, if there's something in my wheelhouse, you have the credentials. Yeah, they'll reach out and maybe somebody they they're trying to help incubate like a Chinese company or person doing a thing and if I could help then they asked me to be involved. So that's kind of cool. And it's uh, I wanted to mention something here at a, at a macro level on a professional side before you mm. share some of the personal yeah, things yeah, you wanted to talk yeah. about. Um, it's been, I guess, interesting is a word for it, but the, the things that are going on geopolitically, uh, you mentioned some oh, of yeah. the things that are affecting the projects we're working on. And the fact that, uh, you know, the, the trade war between China and the U.S., um, and also the, the, the culture war that I think is forming between China and the U.S. in some respects, um, is something that has trickled down to little old you and me, right? In, in the form of, difficulties transferring money on a project right, or right, right. just, you know, uh, in my case, a company that is a little bit gun shy about hiring a foreigner, even mm -hmm. as a consultant now, yeah. there are plenty of foreigners working as consultants, but they're, they're a little concerned either about the look and feel of like having a foreigner as an advisor, um, when people are trying to have content more from China, right. by Chinese, right. for Chinese, or, or just logistically thinking, ah, oh, he'll probably be too expensive, so forget it. And then when they check in, realizing, oh, you are too expensive. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I, I had one of those kind of recently. I won't get into the details, but I had one of those where they're, you know, we love this. I'm like, what's your rate? And I told them, they're like, um, um. <laughs> and you're like, and that's that's my discount. I, <laughs> right, right. It's like, that's my friend rate. What are you, that's my pung your rate. What are you? So. Yeah, but um, but back you know just to, to yeah, segue yeah, hard, not yeah. really segue, but just to rip this back to the personal. Yeah, um, I shared stuff about my family, and and you've had a lot going on uh, and a lot going off. Yeah, uh, recently. I'm very <laughs> excited about this. Well, this is the year. Th this 20, 2020 for me is fatty no more. That's cool. my that's my mantra because I just I couldn't believe it, and I won't get into the super long story for the sake of time and all these things we want to talk about. But the 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 gist of it is. I mean, I just gotten lazy. I mean, I gotten lazy and sloppy, and and my closet full of shirts that used to have some nice wheel room. Like I wear the specific cut of like the for my dress shirts, like this Brooks Brothers shirt, and they used to fit comfortably. And although you know fairly snug, but and and then I got to where they were just like I looked like they looked like a sausage skin, <laughs> and, and 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 so I the keto diet. Which yes, it's not a fad diet. It's it's become a popular fad in a way. Twenty odd years ago, when I was a bodybuilder, there's actually a bodybuilder diet that was a they always it was a type of ketogenic diet. Mm. It's way harder core than what like but I'm doing yeah. now or what people right. talk about. But I did that back in the day, and guess what? It, I I took to it. Some people mm. like struggle. They hate it. Right. Oh my god, I can't not have this sugary treat or that. <laughs> I and that was the hard part for me back in the day. But I I. I plowed through it. Now it's easy. So the point is, yeah, I've been, I've dabbled on and off of keto. Our buddy Larry, who's directing my favorite season that we're working on, um, you know, he's been on and off it. And yeah. when he's been on it, he's had great results. And so that's real inspiring. But basically, I committed hard. Today is the end of four weeks since I've been since I've been on it since I've been back. The first week I was back, I had to adjust. You know, yeah. I ate all the ate, ate all the things that of you course, want to eat. Yeah, the stuff you but, missed. But but my girlfriend Susie has been the champion. She's officially the keto manager because she she's so excited about it, and she so she took it upon herself to help me order from like all because. You know, it's great what you can get delivered, but it's also a challenge. Like I have one of them in my phone, yeah. but she's got everything. She's yeah. nice. So I have a fridge full of like meats and chicken and fish and you know cheese, which is great. And see, I love olive oil. I love cheese on keto. That's two thumbs up. Ooh, Ooh hang on, that's the door. Doorbell. Doorbell break. What is that? I don't even leave it in the show. Leave it in the show. What is it? Leave it in the show. That is my uh, 
Those are my coffee pots. Here, let me let me. Add. So are you still recording? Oh, oh yeah, we're gonna. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I didn't stop recording. Oh, yeah, yeah we'll, we'll leave that in. It's a little little little, little slice of life, man. So, Brendan, what just arrived at the door, pray tell. Well, Kevin, that is uh, a, pa- a fresh pack of my no- Dolce Gusto espresso pods. Wow. Yeah, that's how I, well, I added a shot of espresso to your, you hand-carried a cup of coffee, yes. and I made it you extra made it fancy. Better. <laughs> made it extra fancy. Um, so, so, again, that's case in point. That's why I'm going to leave it in, because you can get anything delivered. And in this case, it was a few days ago, and now they showed up because it had to come from God knows where. Right. But, so, yeah, so Susie helped me. I've got the fridge full of all the good foods, mm. and, it, and it's so easy. And I I love to cook, yeah. and I and I love olive oil, coconut oil, and so I'm down basically. Um, since since I started four weeks ago here, I'm down uh, 17 and a half pounds. Yeah, and and I had actually at my mom's two weeks before I came back. I mean, I ate all the things, so I <laughs> well, know I look. You mom, have you to. Gotta eat. But I I I, I could not believe. I weighed a week after that before I came back, and that's where I know my start point. And I'm like, oh my god, I could just, I could not believe I gotten so so fat. And so, how fat were you, Brendan? Uh, uh, when I weighed at Larry's the morning before I came back here in the morning, uh, I was two ninety six, wow. which is crazy. Because awesome. I was walking around thinking I was two fifty. <laughs> oh, I'm two fifty, and I've always been kind of around two fifty. No, oh, I'm a little heavy. I'm two sixty. No, 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 no. Because I, I realized that my mom's. I must have been like three oh five at my mom's. That's insane. <laughs> it's insane. And I have a fairly sturdy. Like I, I still have a decent amount of muscle mass, and I've kind of got a sturdy frame. frame. Yeah. So I, I don't just look like I don't look like the Michelin man. I don't think normally, you no, know, no. when I'm heavy, but I mean, come on. I mean, the difference is, the difference is notable and you, and what people say, and you said is you can yeah. really see it in my face. Which yeah. When is, I came I lose here, it from the scalp down and I'm losing like... more on the scalp too. I got, the sunroof's <laughs> opening up on the back of my head. That's really irritating. Well, that's happening to a few of us. But when I walked in, it was like, Hey, there's Brendan, but, but like less of him yeah. than there was before. Same yeah. guy, same handsome Aww, you know, chap, shucks. but but just a little smaller, right? Still the same height. Yeah. Thank but, you. Yeah. You're rocking. My, my yeah. wife, when she saw a photo of you recently on WeChat, she was like, wow, is that Brendan? And I didn't feel jealous at all. I, I can understand why she appreciated <laughs> like, it. I do like, him. Yeah, I, I, I do him good. too, yeah. That yeah. was actually at the... Um, from the, the thing. It's yeah. the photo from the awards thing. Exactly. I had the hair all slicked back. And you were my suited suit, and booted. Freshly shaved. Yeah. yeah the, the sides. I still got like a little goatee thing going. Yeah. But um, so so that's... It was a good so, look. So, thank you. So, so 2020 is the keto journey. Um, you know and, what? I, and I'm is this planning possible, to not break it. I'm not going to break it. Can you just do an arbitrary number related thing? Yeah. Put a decimal point after the second two. Can you get to 202 pounds by the end of 2020? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I'm on track. That could be I, like I, your And, and, the, the and you, you slowed it because this is actually literally no exercise. This is only diet. So, and I'm also doing intermittent fasting where I'm comfortable with it. Yeah. So the no exercise it, it's totally thing really possible. appeals to no, me. No, I, I want to, yeah, that's, we can all do that. <laughs> I'm doing that already. I'm doing it right now. Um, yeah, I want to get down to about 185. Mm. So I've got a lot to go, but I can, I can hit that in a year. I want to get back to 180. I, I had been doing well for a while, like a year ago in terms of, it wasn't keto, but it was my own thing. And I dropped 20 pounds. And then just, you know, gained it back slowly. Not all of it, but half of it. Yeah. And you, you were talking about, you know, Susie's been wonderful as a partner. You're, yeah. You're keto manager. Um, your, your life partners can, can be a force for good or for evil. And you can encourage or discourage <laughs> each other. So lately, like, when's wonderful? But part of that wonderfulness has been, hey, uh, I really feel like some fried chicken tonight. Um, and I was like, okay, I probably won't have any. But then I do. And then she also ordered a beer just for me along with the fried oh, chicken. Like, yeah, how can I not go. have the beer? Sure, so course, then I'm having a beer to. at 10 p.m. with fried chicken. Well, you know. So. So, uh, yeah, and, and the results agreed. of that are, are evident. But um, like you said, you don't beat yourself up about that stuff. You allow yourself, if you slip or cheat um, on your eating, it's fine. Um, but just make sure that you don't completely lose all bearings and, and all anchoring of, of where you are. That's the tricky part. And and so I, I am I'm committing to you, dear listener. No, I, I am all year. I'm going to stay keto all 2020. No cheat day because it's, it's why. No. Because if you're on this – you burn fat while you sleep. Yeah. Your body's using that stored fat if you didn't eat a giant meal before bed, which you shouldn't do in any diet, you know. But it's burning that stored fat while you sleep. And counterintuitively to those of us who are ignorant of the details of keto and ketosis, 
you're burning fat while you're taking in yeah, a lot of fat, yeah, exactly. but it's good fat. It's got to be the good fat. Yeah. yeah. It's in, in the good fat here is like olive oil, coconut oil, butter, like yeah. real butter, yeah. you know, things like that. You could have heavy cream. You don't want to have milk. Yeah. I don't like milk anyway, but, and I don't even use it now in my coffee just because you can't get really good heavy cream here easily, even at the expat stores. I mean, you, yeah. you, you would know where to find it's it. It's tough. It's not like a, you can't just get it at 7 Eleven, you know. So, what are the don'ts uh, that you miss the most in terms of eating? The things you gave up that you really miss the most? I don't want to throw you off the wagon here, but well, no, no, no. That's no, I can roll with it. The, the, I would say, I mean, look, I, I love Coca Cola and I don't drink Diet Coke <laughs> and diet, diet beverages are kind of a, almost as bad, almost as bad as the regular ones in all ways, especially even on keto because yeah. it still messes with this trick in your body, apparently. Mm-hmm. The ketosis, for some people, yeah. for some people, it could kick you out of ketosis, although it's a Diet Coke. And I just don't, I think they taste nasty, yeah. even though they've improved it a lot. It still tastes nasty. But so, you know, I love, I like like vanilla Coke. Like if I go back, when I go back to LA, I'm going to go to Bob's Big Boy. And this time I'm going to have like, like, like the chicken dish and some vegetables. And I'll still be at Bob's and I'll enjoy being at Bob's. And I'll have like an unsweetened Long Island iced mm-hmm. tea, which will be a first. But normally I would have the normal or uh, not Long Island iced tea. Wait, do you do Long that's Island iced tea? No, no, no. No, uh, uh, Arnold Palmer. <laughs> Arnold Palmer. That's what I'm trying to say. The half lemonade, half tea. <laughs> no, think about I'll that do the unsweet. I, I, they've I, really I, improved their menu. They've really <laughs> stepped it up again a, a notch. Well, you know, all those studio lunches, people have to cruise. Exactly, I'm just going right, to Bob's yeah. and meanwhile they have right. the, the 12 shots of alcohol. Um, no, the, 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 the basically the sugar-free Arnold Palmer. But uh, I will miss the, the um, you know, the vanilla Coke. Mm. But, uh, but and like Belgian waffle but at bob's i've literally i've i've all these places that used to be my thing when i find a cafe that did like a you know in in the u.s or a western breakfast best waffle i've ever had is bob's big boy Mm. bob's big boy in burbank is the best waffle i've ever had Nothing compares. They know how to do it. And so I'm going to miss not having a waffle in 2020. Mm. But Did that's you ever okay. go to Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles? Oh, Roscoe's is amazing. Roscoe's is <laughs> right. I mean, I give Roscoe's. It's right there. And I mean, very non keto. Right? With the chi- very we well, have the chicken part. You can actually <laughs> Take the skin if off. you don't no, if you don't overdo it, you can have up to like roughly they say 25 grams of carbs mm. a day is mm. like where you that's where you start to risk knocking out. For some mm. people, it's 50. So you could, yeah, I could, I could have a big fat piece of fried chicken if I wanted to. And Depends I, and, on your metabolism overall as a factor. Uh, yeah, that, exactly. And so, I, I, but I just, I like being in it. I, I feel better. Some people just they have what well, the keto flu, like they drag for the first week or two. I heard about that. I don't know. I'm like, I'm good to go. I'm good to go because you know, fried eggs. Fried eggs, mm. any kind of meat, cheese. I mean, what God did I please? This is, <laughs> you know, this is this is like this is the diet. This is the Brendan Davis diet. If I could if I could slide in a vanilla Coke and a Belgian waffle It'd and not screw right it there. up, it, I'd be this would be for life. But um, I'm rocking that. And then in terms of personal stuff, um, looking for this the surgery and and you know this I have this problem with my esophagus for the bottom of it s- squeezes down to like basically a pinhole mm. and, and on all of our close some but most people's open up when the food comes down mine sometimes doesn't and i tried ch- i choked at your house on thanksgiving and yeah. it was nothing to do with the food but 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 yeah it's really a drag and the good news is i'm not going to choke where i'm going to die because it's it's lower than where your windpipe breaks right so off. you're not so you but but if you but you have to like your saliva backs up so you, yeah. you still have to like get rid of that liquid you until, have to until, expel. yeah you still have to like excuse me every three right. minutes to go get rid of you know basically spit and is it stress related also? I know it's a physiological thing. Of I, course, I, but. I certain that stress doesn't help. Mm. Um, I'm relatively good with managing the stress thanks mm-hmm. to meditation um, and, you know, other, other, you know, just practice. Well, you're and under managing a lot that. of stress. I mean, the, yeah. the, the, well, I don't, I don't well, now, I, that, now I feel stressed. <laughs> the territory that we swim in, yeah, right? I mean, no, there's just an excruciating amount of pressure it, and uncertainty. It is. It is actually. <laughs> so I'm looking forward to because I don't have insurance, and so looking forward to getting it once we you know get movie money. Yeah, you know, my, part of my payday from this movie is like first thing I'm doing is as I'm getting that surgery before we go, and it's balloon dilation. They scope a balloon. Oh, and thing, then puff it up, and, and they just inha- and they inflate it, and they hold it, and they move it around a little bit, and they kind of wiggle around. And that lasts about two to four years for most people. They also have more permanent things where they can put like a wire mesh a cylinder in there, basically a stent. Uh, and, and there's one other that's thing a little that they more can invasive, do. Right? They, that is a little more, and then they have a thing where they cut off the bottom part that's kind of all just Jesus. gunked up. And then and yeah, I want to like do that. I don't want to. Yeah, yeah, they, they, they got to pull off the bottom piece. I don't want to. So how much do that. does a little puffy balloon thingy cost? 
well, when I, I did it when I had my awesome movie insurance back in LA, and so I paid like fifty dollars. But it's I think it's like eight to twelve grand, depending Damn. on depending on various factors. So that comes out to what a day if it lasts, let's say, three years. Yeah, you're looking at that's like a thousand. Well, so that's like so, twelve dollars a day, right? Something like. Well, you know what the thing was when I first had it done. And I went to first time. I'm like, you know what? Okay. So I went to take myself out. I got, got a nice steak someplace. And I took that first bite and it hit the back of my throat. And there was like, Doop, just like plopped in my stomach. <laughs> it's like, I didn't even, it's like, it's like, and then I'm like, well, that was weird. And I had another bite and bloop, just bam, like hit my stomach. Like I, I almost heard it rattling in my stomach. I'm like, and I was like, does everybody, is this how everybody, this, I was so pissed. I was like, what, is the rest of the world, do they people eat? And it just like, just drops into your stomach. You sound like, like David Letterman when he was like dropping watermelons off the top of Radio City. <laughs> uh, to see what would happen. I felt it's about. Like, hey, it goes right in there. It was also, it was about that satisfying too, to watch the watermelon explode from the top of 30 Rock. Um, so I'm going to do that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so keto and getting that surgery knocked out. And business wise, of course, we're, you know, we won't jinx ourselves with predictions, yeah. but. But We've done that before. Yeah, we have. We're going to get to that in a minute. Um, is what we were wrong about last year? <laughs> we did this, but um, but but you know, in all seriousness, it's it's you know things are looking good, and again, there are other projects are also chugging along, and and so it looks pretty good. Yeah. You know, I've got I've got about a two month window to live. <laughs> and to, to get something good. happens, it's you know, two months in the freelance world. That's like that's that's, that's like forever. that's like a long. I can't even see two months right now. Yeah, I do see what's crazy. Um, yeah, so so. Pop quiz. Mm. Guess when my must travel visa date is, right? Just where I have to at least do an exit. And it, it's January 24th is my must travel visa date. Guess okay. what else starts January 24th? January 24th. What starts January 24th? Oh, God, I'm trying to think of something funny to say. Um, you know what the answer is, though. The rest of your life. Chinese New Year. Chinese New Year. Yes, that's right. Because I will be in, I'm going to uh, Taipei with the family next week, actually. Yeah. And we'll be there until the end of uh, January so we can get Chinese New Year in with the family. Over the in laws. My in laws wins, you know, blood. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so I don't have the good news is I don't have to wait, but the bad news is I'm got to take a trip. Well, yeah. I may, well, I may be taking like a long one way out to go, you know, right. do stuff. So, like last night, I was, I was, you know, where to go? I was, to go? I was on Google Flights, like, like looking at <laughs> comparing things. Yeah. I may fly to Seoul for lunch again and come back or something. Yeah, you, know? you tend just, to you do that, right? Just... <sighs> Sometimes, usually when it's last minute, like or or just you know something happens. Have a bowl of sundubu and then back it's on the plane. You know, yeah. just well, what are, I don't know if that's keto. Well, my my uh, advice to barbecue. Brendan has been because Brendan would do this quite frequently back when I first met him is is take these trips where he basically <laughs> had just breakfast like, in Hong Kong, did a U turn in the airport and came back um, to uh, spend a twenty four hour period, get out of the airport. Don't sleep at all. Don't have to worry about putting your stuff in a hotel. Just do the town for 24 hours and then back on the plane and sleep on the way back. So I don't know if you're uh, if you're working that uh, strategy in at all, but I, I might. I, what's funny? Uh, my so my, bir- my birthday is January 5th. That's the Sunday. Oh, and um, that's right. You told me about that. Yeah, yeah. You got to come. We're gonna do like yes, a have little dinner thing. Yes, please. Um, no, it's no host, unfortunately. So, so, so bring your wallet. But no, but you don't have to pay for everybody. Just, yeah. Um, but uh, we're gonna go to Jeff Powell, Chef Jeff, who's Chef a Jeff. famous, uh, and he was on Big Fish in the Middle Kingdom. He's back a in the legend day. in this region and, he and elsewhere. He is. Yeah, he was sous chef at Stars, the mm. famous Stars yep. restaurant in San Francisco, yep. and he's got a long story in China. But he has, uh, among things, he has he's reopened his used to be Frost, and now it's called That One Place. Mm. Where are we going? Oh, we're going to that one place. That one place. It's a great little thing, and uh, it's so good. That's we we ate there the other day. Is this where you had the single malts? It is. And Susie had a little bit too much. I mean, she handled it totally well. She just she didn't feel well later because because yeah. she's small. She had the same amount I did. Really? Yeah. Because wow. Jess, Jess, and yeah, she's not the same size and, you are. No, so. Not exactly. I'm like two and a half times her size. <laughs> so, and I, you know, a, a adult child of alcoholics on my dad's side, I can handle. I mean, I could drink Me too, a ridiculous man. amount if I wanted to. So I can drink a poisonous amount of alcohol. Oh, it's 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 sad. <laughs> my, my old Chinese company, they they loved it whenever they would have like the oh let's show face and let's drink right. with this big boss guy we're meeting and here here's our lawa you know <laughs> they push me forward <laughs> oh, thanks guys well, like, you know yeah, twenty six yeah. shots of Baijiu later take I'm a like, bullet for the I'm, team. I'm fine except I'm like ugh you yeah. Know? But um, but yeah, so I'm looking forward. What are you looking forward to in 2020? Is the question to you? For me, I'm looking forward to business stuff, keto, rocking along, and uh, you know, getting that surgery done so I can quit 
sweating it when I eat like a challenging. That's a good bucket list for 2020, man. It's good for me, man. What about you? What are you? Oh, let's see. Well, I'm I'm really looking forward to on the personal level, personal project level. Uh, finishing up a couple things that I've been working on for a while. The, my next children's book, I want to get that in the can uh, this spring. Also this spring, uh, the sci-fi graphic novel I've been working on with a friend of mine. Nick That's Nicolette. really cool. You Thank you. Me, yeah, you showed me the deck. Uh, yeah. uh, a look at the early, a uh, loop. the early roughs. Um, we're going to do the official submission sample uh, for publishers and uh, get that sent in. Also, spring is our time frame we're looking at for that. So I'd like to get those in the can and then also – have some of the work for hire projects that I've got my line on. Yeah. Uh, there's an animation project, some other things. Uh, have those actually come through. That requires, you know, we're looking for funding for stuff we're doing, but right. I've, I'm involved with projects where I'll be hired yeah. to work on it as a director or a producer if when they, they get find the funding. Yeah, exactly. Right. So exactly. it's all, it's all part the of dance. the same bag. Um, so hopefully at least one of those will come through. And then uh, the big feature that we've been working on, right. Ren has been crunching hard. She's the director and yeah. co-writer on that. I've been involved as a producer, uh, as a creative producer, and then I'll be a producer-producer once we get finance. But we're hoping to actually get financing that we can live with. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. was the one where we turned down an acquisition deal. Yeah, right. It wasn't quite where it needed to be. And I, I wasn't the one who turned it down. When was the one? I, I promised her because I tend to be the finicky foreigner. Sure. Like, I don't like that. There's Where's the clause that ensures this? Or the, right, right. I said, you know what? I'm not going to be the one who walks away from this. Um, if you are comfortable with it, yeah, you'll we'll go, go with it. it. And she was the one who said, "I'm not comfortable with yeah, this." And I said, yeah. "I said good because I'm not either." <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, and you. I, it's been if, if people haven't heard before, his wife Wynn is is a notable director as well as like you know producer. Partner yeah, she worked with me at Disney, mm-hmm. and and has, you know she comes from the indie film background uh, herself from animation and has yeah. done live action stuff. Um, so we're creative partners as well as just life partners. Um, but hopefully those things uh, gain more traction than than we had this past year. And then just for my kids, I hope they continue to grow and be happy. Yeah. It's been great to put new um, – when I was a kid, and this isn't uh, a, a slight against my dad, but my dad really wanted me to wrestle. So it was like, you're wrestling. And I hated wrestling, but I did it because my dad wanted me to. And he was a great wrestler, um, you know, but my career in wrestling didn't work out. Ever seen a grown man naked, Billy? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't have any of that going on. But uh, but yeah, it was just something I didn't like. Um, so I promised myself when I had kids, I wouldn't force them to do any particular thing, but I would want them to do something. Yeah. So we've been putting different activities, artistic, cultural, yeah. physical, in front of the kids. Yeah. And just some of those are just at home, but others yeah. like, you know. I'm seeing Claire's ice skating. She's really on ice it now. Ice skating. She's done yeah. dancing. She did soccer. She's got a gymnastics class starting next. And her modeling uh, career is coming modeling along. Career, yeah. You got some footage uh, of the kids, man. <laughs> thank you. Put them I, I uh, can't take any credit for a little bit of credit, but I give most of that to my wife. Yeah, Wynn's beautiful. Yeah. And uh, the... Um, uh, They've been really enjoying like all of that. So we don't, we're not pushing them. We're not throwing too many things at once, like one or two activities at a given time. That's good. That's but good. There, I see the confidence yeah. and, and just the enjoyment. Yeah. Um, that's really gratifying. So we want to continue to do that and, and also have time not to just send them there and pick them up, but to be there and watch them and be exactly. supportive, et cetera. So, um, and then. Um, I hope that the world becomes a little more sane. Yeah, in general, yeah, in twenty twenty. Yeah, yeah. Keep, keep, keep going. That gets into our. Yeah, yeah. That's our next topic. Here. My hope would be that people start to see with twenty twenty vision, hey. uh, as opposed to having their heads in their butts, as 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 many seem yeah. to. I, I'm not too hopeful that that will actually happen. I th- I think things are going to get even worse, at least in the U.S. I'm afraid that's probably the case. It's going to be a rough year with the impeachment stuff going out, on. The election yeah. is going to be ugly, ugly, yeah. ugly, like yeah. butt ugly. Well, there's already an online civil. War. Or people talk about yeah there's, yeah. there's already one online, yeah. and that filters into day to day life, you know. So I don't know, um, and there's about as many people dying from mass shootings in the U.S. as would die maybe during an actual civil it's war. Pretty so unbelievable, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's really crazy. I hope for a little more sanity there, um, especially because there's an off chance that I might be returning to the U.S. in the fall of 2020. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, the You've irons in the fire possibilities. One, yeah, one of them, is, one of the irons is in the U.S. Actually, a couple. So. Um, if, if those take, uh, we may relocate back there and I hope, I mean, there's so many great things about being in the U S and things I look forward to, but there's also this just crazy climate right now that, um, is, is not the U S I remember when I left. I'll exactly. Put it that way. exactly. Not and that things were perfect by any stretch, no, but I thought no. things were bad then, like in 2008, um, it's just gotten worse. It's, it's really wild because we, you know, we we talk about this a bit, and Kevin and I are on the same page again regarding the uh, regard, the politics regard, regarding Orange Julius Caesar currently in the White <laughs> House. Um, 
so be a great it, drink, by the way. It would be, Julius maybe, Caesar. yeah. Oh, it, it might taste terrible. It might taste terrible. Have bad aftertaste. It, it'd be like a, it'd be like a, a screwdriver with diet coke in it. I yeah, think that's his probably drink. just tastes like piss. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> um, so, the, so in terms of changes and challenges, that's that's obviously a big one because we're worried about you know things stabilizing the U.S. China relationship mm-hmm. is, is you know it's, it's on the it, rocks. He ain't making it better. No, and and. And, um, you know, there's, I've mentioned a few times before, there's a, in some sort, he's either a visionary or discredited economist, Martin Armstrong, but mm. he has this thing of the cycle theory mm-hmm. and way like 20 odd years ago, he was predicting, he came up with a model that he's constantly revising and he has, it's called Socrates. You can actually, he, he, le- he leases this to business as consulting stuff. And it's kind of like scary accurate. It's not yeah. like, it's not like your horoscope in the newspaper, which you could apply anyone to anybody if you think hard enough. It's crazy accurate predicting stock market crashes, rises and mm. falls, uh, political turmoil in certain regions, and why? Because he's tracking economics and and, and commodities and environment stuff. It's really a bananas. Mm. And basically, um, we're entering a war cycle. Mm. So according to Armstrong, like 2022 is when the shit really hits the fan, and it's upheaval and turmoil to like 2024 and then we enter like a long peace and prosperity like the good news is that whoever's left standing this sounds like revelation actually it's, honestly <laughs> it's got a little bit of that vibe but he's like i think like he's, a biblical uh, i think he's kind of atheistic so he's not coming no i know like he's a, yeah, a biblical type but but um but, but it does sound like but revelation. it's pretty crazy though <laughs> and and he he's he's it's been scary accurate and So, so I see that. I mean, the war cycle thing, you know, just I saw a recent piece of news about the new hypersonic uh, nuclear system that Russia has. Oh, yeah, it it splits off with like 10 warheads that go different places and and you can't track it. You can't track them fast enough to use whatever anti missile system you may have. Um, And uh, of course, the US military was saying, oh, we've looked at this. This isn't really anything to worry about. But um, things are just heading in a very kind of confrontation. Everybody's like thumping yeah. their chest and rattling their sabers. And, and that's never good, right? And, and at the good. same time that you're cutting the, the historically, chest thumping and saber rattling, all well and good. But as long as you're still doing business together, yeah. right? Then there's a chance that people, that saner heads will prevail. Right. When you're thumping your chest and rattling your saber, but also pulling back on the business front. So we've yeah. got the trade war with the yeah. US and China. Exactly. We've got Brexit, all this stuff. That's super bad, right? Because you're getting exactly. a critical mass of like disengagement and, 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 uh, bubble thinking and so forth. Right. And that's, that's never a good recipe. Right. And, the, and these, and this model, it, because this, this addresses several things that are on my, our question mm. list here. You know, it, it's looking at like economic trends, political trends. And so rising nationalism, rising mm-hmm. authoritarianism, rising tribalism. And of course, we've been seeing that now for several years. Yeah. But I mean, like, it's, it's super obvious yes. now, but that is accelerating and there's going to be a peak. Apparently peak 2022 is like peak badness of that. Yeah. And then there's. And what will that mean? You know, that's and you know I haven't uh, I'm not going to get my crystal ball out but but I but according to this I mean it's sort of on the timeline that just if you just read if you read you know like I sample news from around the world so I'm not just in one reality tunnel on this and if you sample the news around the world and see what people are apparently thinking and feeling and expressing it's like yeah you can see this. You can see mm-hmm. that this this has got a little bit longer to play out mm. the the results of Brexit. Yeah. That, that that terrible twos of Brexit in 2022, yeah. you know, because it's happening. I mean, it's Brexit's happening. I mean, let's see, Parliament's going to Parliament, but I, and, and it, that, it's, it's going to be about two years I, into Brexit, roughly. And so I'll make this observation. I remember when Brexit first was going forward, and there were a lot of people were like, oh, I didn't vote. I didn't realize this was actually going to go this way or that it was a real thing. And now I didn't have a chance to express my true opinion on this. And then they had basically the um, they had a do-over kind a of. A do-over in a way. They like, had a check-in, you know, In terms of like, yeah. you know, is Johnson going to remain, Boris Johnson going to remain. And then it was just smashed in the side of Brexit. So it's sort of like, okay, well, I mean, I, I still think it's a stupid idea, Brexit, but, and there's a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty that hasn't been addressed, uh, issues that haven't been resolved, but apparently it's what people want. So it's yeah. like, all right, you you know, there's, I forgot who said it, uh, people get the rulers they deserve. Um, yeah, somebody I, smart said that. I forget who that was. <laughs> I think but, we're, yeah. we're seeing that in, in space. And uh, I don't know if you want to transition from this into some 
predictions based on yeah, a, a revisit of the ones that we had in tw- for 2019. Well, yeah, let's didn't do, work let's, out or let's did do and, that. I, I think, and then maybe some stuff going forward. To I'm 2020. trying to remember. Yeah, let's do that because uh, time wise, I think he's going to knock on the door any minute because we have outside right. works in 25 minutes. Just stacking up the podcast stacking them up here. today. Yeah. I remember we. Oh, I remember one. Yeah. Uh, People could fact check me on this. You guys never talked about that, but let's let's pretend we did. I think we did about Trump and like whether or not he would be impeached in 2019. We definitely talked about it off mic. I'm not sure. If we yeah, maybe it was an off mic conversation. Right? But I remember thinking that he would not be, even though I feel mm-hmm. he deserved to be. I thought, no, that won't yeah. happen. Um, and then, hey, it did at least in the house. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, there's that. We were also predicting. Oh, I was predicting I would leave China. Right, and I didn't. <laughs> right, right. I'm well, still right. Here. Yeah, because I remember. It, I remember. It, yeah, it was looking. Yeah, for various reasons. For it's, various it's, reasons, it, it was like, like uh, oh, part of it was health. Like you know, there was a uh, family was showing some minor but still you know obvious health related things, and it's like ah, and also Claire's school. They had this this situation right. where the administration changed and the curriculum changed. Actually, fewer foreign teachers, fewer English curriculum. It's like ah, do we want to stay for this or not? Um, and then at the last minute, they they rolled that over for one more year. Exactly. So, um, there were a lot of sort of like ninth inning changes. Like, okay, I guess we'll. It's not the tipping point hasn't been reached yet. So yeah, we're. St- I predicted we'd be gone, and and here we are. But that's kind of every year I've been here. Yeah, <laughs> I've yeah. Had that prediction. I'm out of here next year, and then I'm I'm still here. There you go. Well, there you go. Well, for yeah, for me, I think I, I, again, I I'm not positive what we said on the mic or not. Um, without going back and and listening to all that stuff. But I do remember that con- I remember those conversations a lot between us, and I know some of that was was on on the mic. And um, in terms of, uh, I, I know I was you know predicting that we would have wrapped the movie in Paris right yeah. now. I would be uh, I would be I would have gone to that the Forty ers game with Larry. Right. I would have been there for this yes. amazing game this last Sunday. And through no fault of your own, as you mentioned earlier yeah. in the show, it just, I mean, financing independent films is tough, right? Yeah, it's, 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 you know. It is not it is not easy, but I think that... Um, and, and there are a lot of crazy factors that they're yeah. almost kind of cool. I mean, it's not cool that you don't get the money. Yeah, but when yeah. you look at really yeah. like, yeah, the, this the, the, the like, factors, it's like, yeah, wow, yeah, whoever the, thought I would be in the well, mix of this crazy... That was my thing. And the, yeah, we won't, won't go down the rabbit hole on it, but the, the, the first one falling apart was because of some major geopolitical drama related to the country where the financiers are yeah. and the US and, and right. it's like and so I was I remember sitting here um it was related to oil and I remember basically this one tanker had to land safely in a certain place and, and then that money and anyway so I remember sitting here and having this moment I'm looking at this this map that somebody sent me that tracks all the ships out there in the ocean and I remember staring at this, and, I'll, not, and they're anonymized enough that you don't know which one's which unless yeah. you have the right permissions. But I remember sitting there looking. It's like, okay, I'm from basically small town, southern U.S., and now I'm sitting in Beijing, China, watching an oil tanker in the Gulf of Oman <laughs> that my the fate of my future rests on the successfully getting to port because it's right when there was the attack, the attacks, quote unquote, the, yes. the the false flag to try to get into war with Iran. Before that got uh, put on pause. And the cool thing about this, I say from an objective point of view, is that for those of you, and those of you who are independent producers or involved in, in independent content creation and financing will understand this. There's a game, I don't know if they still make it, called Mousetrap. You, you have this crazy Rube Goldberg contraption that you have to set up and then kick off in order to catch this mouse on the other end. And that's what being an independent producer is like. Like, so for somebody like Brandon, who's dealing not only with the creative, but also the logistics of trying to get the financing, this to go to there, to do that, and then the tanker and the thing, and it goes in the account, blah, blah, blah. And then we have the money and then we can make the film. Exactly. Uh, it's like playing mousetrap, but like with much higher stakes. Totally, totally. <laughs> and it, cause, cause it's all monopoly money until you can actually, I mean, my thing is when, when a thing is finally financed, like the deal's signed, the money's moved. I treat myself. I go to a really nice place. I get a steak. I get like a great bottle of scotch, great glass of scotch. It's, it's real, and I eat it. And like I'm consuming. It's a ritual yes. thing where I'm. I'm. I'm it's inter- it's, become it's real. part of my body. It's like okay, this is real. And so I'm looking forward to that. What is your New Year's Eve message to the world as we sit here New Year's Eve day? Oh my! Nice, Year's, nice clear day for a change. My New Year's Eve message to the world. I think I'll 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 actually jump back to something I said earlier. I hope that 2020 is a time that people look uh, with 2020 vision and mm-hmm. really um, open their eyes. Uh, avoid you know whether you're liberal, conservative, Chinese, American, whatever. Just avoid thinking about things the way that you normally do. Understand that there are different points of view. Try to get out of your bubble and yeah. really. Look at things without judging and then, you know, take a breath. And I'm, I say this for myself more than anybody. 
and make your decisions as sensibly and as empathetically as possible. That's my that's my wish for 2020 for all of us. I I don't want to be lazy, but that's I I'm going to co-sign <laughs> that as mine. There, I was reminded the other day. Um, I, I ended up talking about Robert Anton Wilson's model agnosticism, mm. which is you know there are all these models of the world. Everybody has their own model or version of the world in their head, and and he was asked by someone kind of earlier when he first started putting you know, some of his crazier thoughts out because he would have like super crazy thoughts and speculative science and then wrap it in established science. And so the, the crazy speculative parts, you go, oh, I can see that. Yeah. You know, but he was like this fiction writer writing where a lot of it seemed super true. And then there were the things that were, that he made up, but they were made up like amazingly intelligently. And someone basically said, well, what do you actually believe? And he said, I don't believe anything. He said, I, mm. I practice model agnosticism. What's that? It means have your model, have your reality tunnel, but then make it a point yes. to spend, take some time, go down as horrible as it may be, go down the rabbit hole of the opposite of your positions, yep. understand where those people are coming from, at least, and then do that with all the spectrum of different things. And so what does it do? Empathy. Helps yeah. to create empathy for a yes. fellow human person. And we badly need that. And I know uh, we didn't really get to 2020 predictions, but I'll say this. I know we're going to be going down the rabbit hole one way or another. Yeah. Um, so hopefully we all come out of that rabbit hole, you know, relatively intact, and we, we see each other on the other side. Well, if you beat me there, save some carrots for me, all right? Definitely, man. All right, buddy. Thanks, Jeff. All right. See you, buddy.